Thank you for using Global Two Link. Hello. Yo. Hey, that brother man. What's going on? Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know what happened the first time that, uh, you know, I, I tried to accept it, but uh, something went wrong, but uh, it went through this time. So, you know, we, we live, you was telling me a lot of things, you know, about, about the case, you know, early on. But, um, you know, a lot of people around here heard about the situation, but, you know, t tell me, you know, from, from your point of view, like the days leading up to the situation and, you know, the day the situation happened. And you know how it proves that you are, you know what I'm saying, you you pretty much self defense, but you know, they, they never they never, you know, pursue that avenue with you. Right. Um well you know, my case happened in uh two thousand six, August to be exact, August uh twenty first. Um, it all started over uh uh altercation of first it started over break in, which I wasn't involved, a friend of mine, uh, Jamie Oates, his home got broken into uh, a few days later, I want to say uh, on the 18th, which was August the 18th on Friday, he had he got the physical altercation with a uh, with a guy. And uh, from my understanding, I believe he got the best of the guy. And uh, of course, I wasn't there. I was home in my bed sleep. And uh, in the wee hours of that night, uh, I remember like yesterday around like 3.30 in the morning, you know, my dog was walking. So when I went outside to see what was, what was going on, I took my rifle, my register rifle outside to see what was going on. And when I went outside, it was, you know, you know, my, you know Jamie Oates and you know, a couple of my other friends and all those standing around just playing, talking about the fight that just happened. Okay. And so uh, when I went outside, when I, you know, I was out there with my rifle, you know, he was telling me about a fight that just happened or whatnot. And uh, with him, I'm talking about when he told me who he was fighting. Which call will be monitored and recorded. Yeah, when he told me who, who you know, the guys he got in a fight with or what, nah, I said, man, the boys will come to look. I said, the boys will come to look for y'all. But when I said that, I didn't mean that they'll come to my house because you know, I'm friends with the guys too, you know what I mean? Okay. So I'm talking about within seconds, well, I'm talking about within seconds, literally, two cars pulled in front of my house with the lights out and they started shooting. One, uh, uh, I know one of the cars. It, well, it's on it's on document anyway because they the cars were in it. So when they turned the cars in, it's on paperwork anyway. One of the vehicles was a uh, Dodge Charger, and one of the you know because one of them was a, a, a black SUV pulled it right in front of my house, lights off, sort of shooting. Nobody got um, hit that night. This night, nah, no no one got hit, but several several uh, houses on my on my street got shot. Uh, like off the street, like off the corner of Slaughter and uh, Elm Street, off the corner of Slaughter and Olivia Lane, a couple of houses on off Slaughter Street. People, people called the police. You know, the cops came. Uh, of course, that you know, after that happened, everybody got in their cars and they left. Uh, I had, of course, I had bullet holes in my house and things like that. And when the when the, when the police came, I went in the house. I Man, I I went in the house kind of scared because I had to go to work at, at uh, five five o'clock. So I was really kind of messed up in the head about what just happened, you know what I'm saying? Because it just happened out of nowhere, you know what I mean? So then, so after that, like, 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 did the police do a report or, do, or did you, you know what I'm saying? Did, did they come investigate or? Yeah, right after that, for what I can observe, um, police, police were everywhere on my street. That was across the street, that was down the street, that was taking notes, that was taking pictures, because like I say, several bullets, you know, hit the houses or whatnot, you know. Couple of cars, houses got shot, so it's all documented that uh, you know houses were shot at this time period. So I went to work. I went to work at five o'clock, five thirty. Got off at two o'clock. Uh -huh. When I had when I had when I had got off work, well, this was uh, the nineteenth. I was nineteenth when I had got off work. My friend Jamie came by again. This time when he came by, he came to apologize about what happened. That, that, you know, the morning, the wee hours, he came to apologize about the fight he just got into. And why he was explaining, why he was explaining, you know what happened, and why he was apologizing about the drama that he brought to my home. I'm talking about the same black SUV. Pulled up this time to the front. They on my, they on the back street, so they, they kind of, they on the back street, but the back street can look directly in my backyard, you know. Uh -huh. So when I, yeah, so when Jamie, when Jamie was explaining, he just grabbed me and threw me on the ground. He like, get down, you know. So by the time we look up, I seen the black SUV. And I seen uh, one of the one of the one of the city victims, one of the deceased. He uh he he, he hanging out the window. He, he shot a couple rounds. He shot like five, six shots. 
So that was the next day. That was right the next day. After. Yeah, this was the, this was right. This this was the because the first shoot the, the first shoot was like three forty five in the morning. Okay. The second shoot was like way the, the second shoot was like two thirty ish when I got out work when I got out work. Okay. It was two, like it, it was like two thirty in broad daylight. In broad daylight. Okay. And so then after that shooting, what 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 happened? Did, did, so so after that, you know, later on. Uniform on my uh, passenger seat. By the time I get in my car, close the door, 
the same green car pulled up. Uh, I can see the uh, the passenger, which was also which was deceased. He he, he pulled up, aimed the gun in my face, and shot it. You know, shot like he shot like not many rounds, maybe two rounds. Uh-huh. I didn't get hit. The bullet went and hit my uh, car, hit my car door, hit my steering wheel. Okay. And so then what did you do? Like, was that the day when, you know, the alleged, you know, um, murder happened? Or was it? No, the shooting, the, the killing, the, when they died was, was uh, the next day. Okay, as I went, after that happened, I went home. I went to my mama's house, and was, my mama was kind of worried after what was going on. I didn't want to really go into detail about what was happening to her, so I kind of brushed it off. Uh-huh. She won't be with no worry and stress or something like that. So the next morning I went to work. When I went to work the next morning, because I was looking at see what y'all Air Force Base. Some of my co-workers, they seen the bullet hole in my car. They seen the um, bloody shoe. I had a bloody shoe from Molly O getting shot in the foot. Okay. I had a bloody shoe in my car, so they reported it. Some people reported it. Like, my ex of the house, they ain't been like, kind of nervous and quiet because they, they ain't using my, my style or whatnot. Okay. And so they reported it to the chemical resource officer, so... I was told to go, go talk to the temple resource officer about the, about the shooters that, that they had been hearing about. So I explained what was going on to me. I explained the, 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 several, the several shooters that happened in my home, the boy getting shot. I explained everything to my supervisor, you know, told her what was going on and how, you know, the guys been bothering me over a situation I had nothing to do with. So uh, to make a long story short, um, I went on lunch break that day. And about 10 o'clock, after we talked, I talked, I went on lunch break about 10 o'clock. But when I, uh, when I was on lunch break, I had seen one of the guys that I ended up, ended up shooting later on that day. I tried to stop him to talk to him because he, uh, he kind of, he was really involved in the situation, you know what I'm saying? I want him to go kill his brother and, and the other guys that I ain't got no beef with them. You know, the, the beef that they got, it ain't got nothing to do with me. Now, I, I really appreciate they start shooting at me and my home, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, uh. Make a lot. So I ended up going back to work. I ended up going back to work, and then I ended up getting off at two o'clock. When I when I get off work at two o'clock, I got a, my my wife who is at my mama house. So I remember going, getting off work, going to my mama house, changing my clothes, shower, and whatnot. Getting my wife from going back to going back across town to my neighborhood. You know, uh-huh. so when I'm in my when I'm in my neighborhood, I, I'm already hearing from that neighbors that the guys are down. This particular car, that car, be careful, watch out, all this stuff like that. So I got my I got my wife with me just in case. These guys, they shoot at me. I'm, 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 I'm got a right to shoot back. Uh-huh. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't went to a liquor house. I went to a store. I went here, there, and um, I didn't, I did not take my weapon in the woman liquor, liquor house. So I, I had people that was there. They could verify that I did not take my rifle in the woman house. But the woman who owned the, uh, I'm the liquor house. She, she testified that I took a rifle inside her house, which I did. Uh-huh. But I did go to, I did go to her house, and I did speak to her. And when she asked me what was going on, I did tell her that I was at war, which it was a war. You know, it was my home, which was a war zone. Uh-huh. So when, I, when, I, when I mean that, I don't, I don't mean that I'm going after people, that, but, but I am actually in, in, involved in the war zone. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what car these guys on, even though they, they say they on this car, but they, they every time they come through, they keep they got different vehicles. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So um, to make a long story, to get to know, to make a long story short, I'm on my way home, I'm on my street, on my way home. And right before I can cross the street, cross the intersection in my car, a car that I never seen before pulled up and kind of blocked me in on Slaughter and Olympia Lane. Okay. And when I look up, it's them. It's 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 James Cole, he's the only one that I can see. And then I see other guys in the car, but I can't really make out who was who. Okay. So when I see him, I don't I don't I don't try to premeditate. You have sixty seconds remaining. Yeah, um Well yeah, you can call right back after this call too. Okay. So when I see him, I match the gas. When I match the gas, I go, uh, they give me this, this space across the street. So when I cross the street, I pull up in my yard. When I pull up in my backyard, within seconds, of the same in the car, my front yard. So I tell the guys in my car, I had a couple guys in my car with me, tell them to get out of the car, because we, we are sitting up, sitting in my car. Okay. So I grab, I grab my rifle, and I ran out my backyard. You have 30 seconds remaining. Yeah, everybody ran at different locations. So okay. when I ran, you know, out of field or not. So when I ran to the location where I ran it, which is like 120 yards from my house, the the they done came around, they car came around. And when they car when they car came around, they was at a stop sign. Um, you want me to go and call you now? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and call me right back before you get to this part. All right. 
So what you what you're listening to is uh, a young man, Roderick uh, Ricky Davis, uh, who was convicted of uh, he was accused of killing two men in 2006 uh, in the Webtown section of Goldsboro, North Carolina. Um, there's some discrepancies that has always been uh, prevalent. Uh, to people who know about the situation uh, concerning what really happened and um, how he, you know, got convicted and how the situation occurred. Here, here he's explaining how, you know, he was continuously under assault um, by these two uh, gentlemen, and which, once again, all of this is, you know, alleged or as part of court records. Um, and I do say rest in peace to the gentlemen uh, who were deceased. And from and I'm gonna let him finish telling the story, you know, rather rather than me speculating on, you know, what has happened over the years. But you know, uh, currently, I think he is trying uh, to get. Are governed by the terms of use in the privacy statement posted at www.connectnetwork.com. The terms of use in the privacy statement were most recently revised on January 15, 2019. The rate for calls from this facility is zero dollars ten cents for the first minute and zero dollars ten cents. For each additional minute, plus taxes and surcharges. As an example, a 10-minute call would cost $1 plus taxes and surcharges. You will have up to 15 minutes of talk time to pay for just this call for a fee of $1.19 plus the cost of the call plus 6 to establish and fund an exact so, um, but, you know, this is a very tragic situation where, you know, two men uh, lost their lives. And I do want to send my condolences to the family and friends of, I think their name was TJ and Slick. You know, I, I didn't know these young men. By this time, I was living in Virginia, happened about 2005, but Please I didn't hear about the uh, situation. Please have your the call's uh, not connected. To accept these charges and process this transaction, press zero. Please enter your credit card number now, followed by the pound sign. Please enter your four-digit expiration number now, followed by the pound sign. Yeah, so so when we left off, it was like you know you you pulled up in your yard and you know they pulled up you know and, and kind of blocked you in so you y'all dipped out and you ran through the backyard. Yeah, there was no way like in my yard the way my house the way my house is designed. I like I don't have a back I don't have a back door. I got a I got a front door and a side door. Okay. So run run through the front is a, out of out of question. Like there's no way I can run towards the front to avoid the conflict. So. I ran out my yard, which I had no duty to retreat in, in the state of North Carolina. I didn't have to run. You know, I could have stood there and stood on my ground, but instead of me uh, engaging in a conflict, I ran in the opposite direction from the guys. So, like I say, when I ran, when I ran out of my yard, I don't know what they're gonna do. I don't know if they're gonna get out of the car and shoot. They gonna, they, I don't know exactly how they're gonna do. They, what they gonna do? So okay. I ran the opposite. 
situation when I last seen them, which was in my front yard. Okay. So when, I ran out of my, when I ran out of my backyard, I, I was actually, I was trying to get the, to the project, Lick it home. So in the course of me running across my yard, my backyard, and running across the field, when I stop and catch my breath, I, when I'm talking about within seconds, I look up, there they go. So it's like, there's no way I'm chasing them. I mean, the evidence shows that they're chasing me because they in my yard, they in my front yard, they in my front street. They go uh, up my front street, uh, up side of the street, make a left on Elm Street, make, a, make another left on Crawford Street, and that's how we end up. So I mean, okay, so you was you was staying on on the side of Slaughter Street, close to the Donnells. Then I'm trying to get a picture of you. Now, I was, uh, I'm, I'm in the middle. I'm kind of, I'm kind of not quite. In, I'm kind of in the middle. Now you know, like no, no, you like you know, you know, like. Say if you if you if you going towards Donnell and you pass Slaughter Street, you stand on the side closest to Donnell's, or you stand on the on the side closest What's like the going to um you know going towards the mall. You know it's two sides of Slaughter Street. You stay on the side closer to Donnell's, or you stay on the side closer to you know what I'm saying. Like if I'm on Slaughter Street and I'm and I'm and I'm and I'm, and I'm looking at your front yard, am I facing Donnell's or am I facing is my back towards Donnell's? Yeah, your back, your back gonna be towards down there. Like if you go up my front yard, you you'll be able to see Dilla, um, the old Dilla alumni, the old okay, the the okay, you be able to see like the old okay, so they park the cars at, you know, that little child hall there. You be able to see that area. I got you, I got you, I got you. So yeah. so pretty much they try to make it seem like in, in court, I guess you was chasing them. Is that yeah, is that's that no way possible? It's, it's like impossible for me to know. If I run out my backyard, it's, it's, it is no way I have, in 2006, I have no device to know where they're going at. There's no way I can know where they're going at. So to make a long story short, when I ran, man, I ran, ran, ran. When I ran, I stopped between two houses. Now, there's no there's no significant reason why I stopped between two houses. I stopped and catch my breath. You know, I didn't I didn't, I didn't, didn't stop because there was a perfect spot to, to, to shoot somebody how the prosecutor, you know, was trying to persuade the jury to believe Mm -hmm. I ran until I couldn't run no more, run no more, and I started to catch my breath. When I caught, when I started to catch my breath, with me, I like, I like tap the, I like tap the bottom of the cliff, cause my cliff, it, it just seemed like it was a little, uh, loose a little bit, but it was, it, it was, you know, it was in there, but not. Uh -huh. By the time I look up, there they go, there, there they go, right there. They in the south side, they in the south side of uh, Crawford Street and Olivia Lane. Okay. And I'm like, and I'm, I'm literally 80 feet from them. Like diagonal from them, like on the kind of on the side or whatnot. So I see them before they see me. Do I shoot? No, I don't shoot. I hope they don't see me. But when I look, I see uh, a silhouette, which now I realize that who that was. There was uh, the McKinney guy in the back seat. So he pointed towards me. Now you know the now I know that he had a gun in his hand. So he pointed towards me, and when he pointed towards me, the driver he turned left. Like he he looked left, like you know. When the when the when the back seat passed me, he pointed towards me because I'm to the left. Okay. The it looked like he about to turn right, but when the when the back seat passed me, pointing at me, like like I get to say, there he goes. The, the driver looked towards the left. When he looked towards the left, he see me. Okay. When he see me, he make a left turn. When he make a left turn, he got his gun hanging in it. He got his gun in his hand, hanging out the window. And when he hanging out the window, I, I got my gun in my hand, and when he shot one time, when he shot, I saw the shooter. Okay. And I shot until I, you know, I couldn't shoot no more. Well, you know, I shot, I shot four, 13, 14 rounds or something like that. Um, I panicked, you know, I got out, I ran, you know what I'm saying? As I shot, I ran back home, but as I was running, I hear more shooting going on. I hear more shooting coming from the car. Okay. So, you know what I'm saying? I ran, I ran back to my house, got in my car, and went, and, 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 and went, went on about my business, went across town, went to check out my children, went, got a hotel, went to see what's going on. I don't know if they deceased or not. I don't know. If they injured, I just know. I know he shot at me, and I shot in the car. So uh -huh. I'm, not, I'm not sure the uh, severity of the the the, the, the wounds or whatnot. I don't really know the details of, of, of you know, nothing like that. So 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 so, so at, how long was it before I guess you know the police establish you as a suspect, where they start looking for you, or you know how how do they end up you know confronting you yeah, in that well, matter? Yeah, what I learned. Yeah, what I uh, my shoot the shoot happened on the twenty first. Okay. okay. On the twenty third, I turned myself in. Um, I, I just like I like I said, I explained to you before. I turned myself in because for one, uh, for one, I knew people. I knew people saw, saw the situation, and I felt like 
maybe it's like, you know, I do the right thing, I turn myself in, people are going to have to tell what happened, the evidence is going to show what happened. They had to have guns and shell cases and gunshot residue in the car, so that's going to show that the boys are riding around doing drive-by shooters. Uh-huh. So I'm thinking that I'm thinking that the law gonna actually work in my favor. Like the evidence gonna actually show what they were doing. Cause two people can't be trying to first, do commit first degree murder. That's two people. Somebody gotta be the greater as a lesser force. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But um, so uh, immediately after immediately after the shooting, I, I learned that you know somebody went in the car and took guns out of the car. So I'm really nervous about turning myself in because I don't know what they got or don't got. I don't know. Cause I was, I was told that it, somebody took the guns from the boy's hands, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I can't turn myself in cause I, I'm gonna explain myself if the, if the boy, if the guns is missing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I ended up explaining it to my, my family and whatnot. They, they ended up, you know, talking to me and basically persuaded me to turn myself in. And, um, and I was told to don't go in detail with the, with the, uh, the shoe. Just wait till I get a attorney. So that's what I did when I turned myself in. So I confess that I that I shot the guy and I came downtown to turn I came downtown for that reason to tell them that I did just that. But and did you did, I, I, did you okay. tell them the conditions though? Cause, Cause I actually like when when your homeboy called me yesterday, I I kind of read the article a little bit and it was like you know when the when when the detectives got you and mind you I know you were what twenty three at the time maybe. You, right. you and, and you and you're scared, but I, I I know like one of the one of the detectives in court. They was like, you know, when they got you or whatever, you was like, yeah, um, I shot I shot those guys or whatever. Like, but they they right. just mean it's they they didn't say it was a self defense. They didn't say you said you know telling me the whole story right. like you telling now. They was just like, yeah, right. I shot those guys, and then you yeah, know. See, when I turn, go yeah, ahead. Right. When I turn, when I when I turn myself in, like I said, I didn't go into details. I didn't go in detail with the with the investigators. I was told not to. Now, you know, I was told, you know, basically how they'll turn they turn a story around, they'll put words in your mouth. Say, this call will be monitored and recorded. That's why my that's why my relatives were like, don't go in detail, you know, this way she get a turn it. So within an hour, you know, like I said, I turned myself in and like the people say, I, I confess I shot those guys, I didn't I did not go into detail. But within an hour I I, I received a court appointed attorney named Jill Post. Who's also also represent the deceased, which is a conflict of interest. But anyway, okay. uh, Jeff Holtz, I explained everything to Jeff Holtz. When I met Jeff Holtz, with, with the, within an hour of my arrest, I explained everything that I'm saying to you to Jeff Holtz. Every little situation, I explained everything that I'm saying to you right on the phone to Jeff Holtz. And Jeff Holtz, like, yo, man, okay, self defense. You know what I'm saying? That, you know what I mean? You, you're going to be good. You know, you ain't got no worry about it, whatnot. Only thing I didn't go and deal with with Joe Rose, I didn't I didn't tell him about like only thing I didn't explain only thing I didn't say I didn't say to the, the guys that was in my car. I mean it wasn't for me, I feel like it was no need to tell. They didn't do anything, you know, they didn't shoot anybody, they didn't do they had no role to play in the death of the deceased. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, when I turned myself in, I turned myself in, taking full responsibility of what of what I did. So yeah. there was no need to even bring up the the guys that was in my car, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, did they so ever they ask? Wrist, did they uh, ever ask? Did, did, did law enforcement? No. Or, no, they never asked. They never knew no, they, anybody else yeah, was in your car. They didn't have a weapon. They didn't shoot nobody. They didn't do anything. No, but it's all I'm talking about. Like, like, like the law enforcement or the courts, they never knew nobody else was in your car. Like, that yeah, one. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it came out, so they weren't questioning all the guys. They weren't questioning the guys that was in my car. You know, I won't keep it a secret. It just wasn't easy to explain those guys. It was not easy okay. to even bring their names up. Okay, so did they ever let him off, or did he have to do time? Yeah, when they, when I went to trial, when they, when they found me guilty, they let him go. He, he ain't gonna do what it takes. Okay, so so talk about the trial because, like, 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 I'm reading this article, and it's just like you know they 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 trying to portray you as you know like you know being and and, and this article miss and, and and I do gotta say rest in peace to everybody involved. Right. Um, I, I gotta say rest in peace to Jamie as well because you know he. Right. He's deceased, but they mentioned him in the courts. Like, you know, they was like, yeah, you, 
you hang with the Oats boys and, you know, your your house was a spot for them. Or, so they was trying to make you seem just like a, you know, like, 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 you know, like, 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 like a drug dealer or whatever that, that was just protecting his turf. And so, it's like, my home, my, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, you go ahead. It's, it's my house where, you know, it's, it's, I'm young, I'm 23, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, my kids be there, you know, my girlfriend be there. Like, yeah, you, I'm working on my house. It's a house that's been in my, my family for 100 years. I'm, I'm working on it. It's mine. I own it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, so, because that's what he said, that, that, like, like literally, I don't know if you remember this conversation, but the article is, is giving information from right. the trial. Like, you, you was like, that was my home, the defendant responded. And then, uh, you know, um, they try to, you know, they try to make it seem like, you know, you, you were selling drugs or whatever. But they said, did you say you're going to tell the jury the truth? He said, yeah, I never got. They, they, they try to make it seem like you was, you know, working with the Oats. Like they, they kept mentioning the Oats brothers. And then you, you, you later say, you know, um, um, the war, you know what I'm saying? Which you, you just explained the war that was going on stemming from, you know, somebody breaking into their house and, and, and taking some things. But then, you know, they, 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 they started targeting you just because you was hanging with them, you know. Right. But 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 through all of that still it don't get no right like 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 you said, it don't no matter what was going on. It don't matter it don't it it's I don't say it don't matter who I hang with, but it, 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 if I be hanging with it with the Ogles or Jamie O, they don't get nobody right to shoot at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I know them guys growing up. So yeah, you was work you was working, but you know, you you just pretty much and, and like I'm I'm the same way, like we won't no game, but I had friends who, you know, if they got in beef then I automatically, you know what I'm saying, became right. You know, part of that beef, but I was, you know, like like you said, I knew the other side too, so I was able to talk to him. Like, look, they're my guys, but you know, I ain't got no problem with you. So I understand the situation you was in because it talks about, you know, how you quote unquote came from a good home with a mom and daddy, same as me. But we had friends, same neighborhood. Everybody do certain things. Then you just, you know, you get, you get, you know. Yeah, you you call back one more time, then then cause, cause we gonna talk about you know where we at right now with it, and then you know okay. we we'll probably continue it like like maybe tomorrow or the next day, but um okay. but I definitely wanna you know get to where we at now you know with it, right. but also you know the discrepancies in the trial and because it it doesn't even look like you know you really got a chance to tell your side of the story to the jury, if if that may I don't know you I know did, what I'm saying did, yeah. I did. Yeah, you know, it, it's like they, it's like the state it's like the state justifies four convicted felons riding around with guns in the car. You got four convicted felons riding around with guns in the car. What do you think they doing? How can you even come up with a reason to justify why they riding around with guns in their car? Yeah. In my neighborhood too do me on. The only reason they in the car with guns in my neighborhood is to do me on. Yeah, call 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 me back and we 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 gonna talk about that. So yeah, this is um once again, this is this is this is um, you know, Roger Ricky Davis, and you know, like I like like I you know mentioned, you know, I know I knew you know I, well, I know his sister, he's a little bit younger than me, but um I heard about this story, I heard about this case, um, you know I think um two years ago somebody reached out to me about it, and you know he was supposedly, you know being able to get some reprieve because you know new information has come out. You know about you know what he said about somebody taking um, the guns that the deceased and the people in the car uh, who was allegedly uh, chasing and, and, and firing upon Mr. Davis 
uh, they took those guns out the car after the shooting happened and made it seem like, you know, the alleged prey had became the predator. You know, so once again, I, I don't know. I wasn't there. You know, I hear different, you know, different, Um, you know, I've been asking some questions about it lately. And I've heard, you know, things that substantiate uh, Mr. Davis claims that, yes, somebody, you know, who was riding in the car took the guns out of the car from the deceased, which made it seem like, you know, that uh, Mr. Davis was just a loose cannon. Welcome to Town Link. Collect call from Roderick Davis. An inmate at Roanoke River Correctional Institution. This call will be monitored and recorded. Please hold. So, you know, right now, I think he's in the process for a motion of appropriate relief. And there are some people who want to interview him about this. So that's why he pretty much reached out to me. I'm trying to get the, the story out. Um, and it's a, it's a sad situation because, you know, we have three lives and three families that have been affected, you know, by, by this. You know, situation that, that, that pretty much could be avoided, but it's so common and prevalent in this, this society, this street society that we live in um, today, um, where people, you know, en en engage in warfare amongst each other. Uh, where Please have your payment card ready. Literally, your card will not you know, be charged people grew the up from the sandbox so together. Charges and process this transaction. Press zero. Please enter your credit card number now, followed by the pound sign. Please enter your four-digit expiration number now, followed by the pound sign. Please enter the three-digit security code from the back of the card now, followed by the pound sign. Enter the five-digit billing zip code now, followed by the pound sign. Please hold while we process your credit card payment. Your card was charged successfully. Hang up to decline the call or to accept dial 5 now. Thank you for using Global Tail Link. Hello. Yeah. So, yeah, you were talking about, like, defense and, you know what I'm saying, like, how they kind of, um, it, it sounds like just looking at the article, like, it sounds like they gave the DA kind of the, the, the narrative or, or they let them tell the narrative as far as, you know, like them painting the picture rather than, you know, you, you paint the picture of, you know, stressing the fact that, you know, these guys have shot at, you know, shot at you multiple times, you coming home from work. You know, you having to run out your house. You know what I mean? Bullets holes in your car. Like none of that stuff was mentioned to the jury. Like it was, it was, a, it was a way how certain things were mentioned, but it was a way how it was a, it was a strategic way how they were blaming certain things on the other side. Like they was trying to blame certain things on the other side. I don't, I don't, I don't physically have it at the moment, but I've seen it myself. You know, he, uh, 
it don't matter what I said. I could have said my favorite color was red, and he would have said I'm a lion. My favorite color yellow. And, you know, it, it, it just, it, it just what kind of child it was. Okay, they didn't you know, try to make make you out to be a liar, because I know they... Right, I, it don't matter what I said. It don't matter what I said. It, it just, I'm just, I'm just making it all up. I just, I just wanted to kill, to be cool. You know what I'm saying? He made it like that. I wanted to, think about what he said. I wanted to, I wanted to go out there and throw away my life and try to feed it or something like that, you know? Yeah. It's just, it yeah. just the narrative that he gave So, did they bring that in? You know what I'm saying? Did they bring that in the, in the trial as well? Like weapons were taken out the car, or you know, different yeah, different yeah, shells. I, I, I uh huh. Yeah, I subpoenaed a witness named um, Will Battle, a, a guy named Will Battle gave a statement in the trial. He was said that that the person who allegedly took the gun is ready to come forth about that. Yeah, or- he's ready. So what is the explain to the people? So 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 explain to the people what an MAR is though. So, yeah, they normally rule on them within a like like within a within a maybe a year, and then you got a chance to to, to rebut them, right? If they do deny your MAR, you got one chance to counter them, right? If if I ain't right. mistaken. Well, So it's been what almost five years now, and you ain't received. Come on, Magaro. Okay, okay. So, 
so um, um, so that 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 kind of put you where 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 did that put you at that right now with you know with, with the legal assistance making sure that that's still right, right now. So what what did they what did what did they eventually um I guess convict you of and, and how much time did they give you? So you mean so you got two life sentences basically, right? And so they they they, they originally tried to give you charges for the other people who were in the car, or or did, did did the other people in the car really? You know what I'm saying? Did they just run away themselves? Like, cause you said like like they gave you two attempted murder, they gave you you know what I'm saying the two two first degree murders, but then I mean they can't give you you know attempted murder for the same people, or, or, or was that right. it? For the other, other two people. Two guys in the car. Okay. They ended up dropping the charges because they never testified. They never testified, so they just ended up dropping the case. Okay. Okay. So I guess you, I, you, you, I, I mean, I know, I know, like it happened a long time ago, and you know, the, I know how the streets was, but you, not, you never tried to, I guess, reach out to them and see if they, they'll tell the truth. I know, you know, so that's a stretch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you like I said before, the state was able to benefit off the fact that weapons were taken from the car. The state capitalized off that. So what so with the MAR, what's your you know, I guess as far as you can say, like what's your main points that that, that you argue? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I argue, yeah, I argue two grounds, two points of my MAR. I, I, well, my first point was uh ineffective assistance counsel because my Jeff Hawks was ineffective, man. Um he had a lot going on. When he was my attorney, you know, um, like I was saying to you earlier, uh, right before, uh, right before my trial, some months before my trial, they, they, he offered me a plea for a vol- for a voluntary man for the time served, twenty feet for thirty two months. I agreed to take the plea. Uh-huh. I was gonna take the plea in, in November of two thousand eight, but I never could make, I never could take the plea because on October the first, Jeff Holmes got into a physical altercation with his brother Bruce Holmes, who was also, uh, who was also attorney. And, uh, and Bruce Holtz ended up dying. Jeff Holtz had to commit suicide. He had a lot of uh, mental issues going on with him. So it seemed like when that situation happened, the DA took the plea off the table and came back with 45 years. So right then I knew something, something was strange happening. How you come with three years? You come, you come with you come with two and a half years to 45 years. So before my lawyer got into the situation in the bubble, they was going to give me uh, 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 26 to 32 months. Mm-hmm. And in the situation happened with his brother, they take the plea. I can't even find no paper. I don't even have nothing tangible to prove that he came and be with this plea. But 
But I'm telling you, they did. Yeah. And I agreed to take this plea. And when I agreed to take the plea, it, it was my, my, my time was, it was scheduled in November to take the plea. Well, on October the 1st, that's when the situation happened with Jeff Holtz. And so, like I say, um, the man was ineffective, man. He didn't, he didn't properly, he didn't properly cross his damn witnesses. He didn't subpoena witnesses. He just basically let the DA do what he want to do. You know what I'm saying? Um, like, 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 for instance, like, my strong witness, William Battles. I, the, the, key, the only reason to subpoena him so he can tell the jury what he told the investigators. And what he told the investigators is that he seen the boy in the bicycle, which was James Ray, take a gun from the driver, which was the aggressor, was on trial. He never said anything like that. He never said that he seen the boy on the bike take a gun from the aggressor. He did mention he take a gun from the passenger, but like I say, the passenger ain't, is not the one that's hitting off. The driver the one that's hitting off. You know what I'm saying? The driver the one that fired first, which gave me... All justification to shoot back in defense. So that's what happened. So what you pass? to tell the jury that my case is a self defense because a man did not have a gun in his hand. So, so the the, um, the 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 battle guy didn't really testify as he as he's supposed to. No, um. he didn't. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't testify fully like he's supposed to. Like, like, like he like I say, he did say he did testify. They saying somebody take take a window from the car, and so. Cause that's what happened, you know. He, he, he did take he, the boy took a gun from the passenger in the driver. But the jury, it, it was very apparent. It was very important. It was very essential that the jury hear that the driver had a gun because that was not the story. The, I only shot my gun because the driver shot his gun. That was it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The jury never heard that. The jury did not hear that at all in the course of my trial. And so, so and right now. Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, matter of fact, bro. Did, 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 so do you got all that evidence in your MAR? I got everything. I, when I, whatever come out of my mouth, I got the proof. I got a show and proof right here. Okay. Okay. So, 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 so you did tell me somebody else want to talk to you about the, the, the case. And we'll, you know, we'll, we'll continue this, you know what I'm saying, too. I, I guess tomorrow, but I'm, I'm going to cut this video short because we reach reaching about an hour on the video. But you definitely, you can call me back after this, too. You know what I'm saying? But we just ain't going to be live. But I, I I definitely wanted to get the people, you know, so just just the just a little bit of information of, of, of what we going, you know, what we what we trying to um you know do try to get some exposure to the case. I hear you know you said it's it's, it's a national magazine want to want to kind of interview okay, as well right now, right? So, um yeah, so so we gonna we gonna get back into that on uh, the next live. But I appreciate you, um, Mr. Davis, for um you know for sharing this. And um, you know, make you you can call me right back. But um, until next time, y'all can um, y'all can tune in with us. But um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna try to you know get down to the bottom of this and you know see if we can't you know get 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 my my brother some justice you know uh, if need be. But yeah, call me right back, bro. So there you have it. Um, you know, once again, uh, Ricky. Davis, I think this happened in 2005, 2006. It was very, um, very tragic incident that happened where two young men lost their lives and this young man lost his freedom. A lot of families are affected, probably still affected by this. And, you know, by doing this, I, 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 I by no means want to bring up old wounds. Uh, but, you know, if there's some, you know, Credence to this claim and that once again, I don't I don't I, I, I wasn't there I hear a lot of things on the street. So that's why I wanted y'all to hear from the horse's mouth on you know what happened um, You know a lot of people, you know Have different versions of what happened, but there's definitely some uh, Credence to some of the things that he say that I've you know done some investigating uh, Myself, but you know, I, I just I just wish that you know things like this never happen. Things like this will not continue to happen. And things like this will never happen again. You know, especially in our community where we have you know young black men basically, you know, hunting and, and shooting and killing each other on a day to day basis. So, um, you know, I'm glad my brother reached out to me. Um, 
via, you know, one of his friends. He, he seen what I'm doing, so, you know, he wanted me, you know, to allow people to, to hear his side of the story because, like like you said, when, when I heard about it, I'm just like, you know, who is this, you know, mad person who just, you know, shoots shoots up a car that many times, you know what I'm saying? But without hearing the backstory, you know, now I got a different um, aspect of the story. So, you know, and um, once again, I'm hearing it from his side. Unfortunately, you know, the, the, the deceased are not here to speak on, on their behalf. So, you know, um, it's definitely, once again, just a heartbreaking, heart-wrenching situation. Whereas, you know, one man is, is, is facing life without parole, life without parole. And, you know, you have, you know, two other people um, that are no longer in the land of the living and their families, you know, still probably have to deal with this to this day. So, you know, I'm not doing this, I'm doing this to, you know, kind of bring light into the situation, um, you know, consider because this is not the first time I've heard of Mr. Davis story. You know, actually a guy um, reached out to me about two years ago and he had written a book about, you know, the situation. So, um, we're going to do some more. I'm, I'm definitely going to keep y'all involved with this, you know, um, and then we, we, we're going to, um, you know, try to go forth with some, with some more information, you know, and, and try to get some clarity. But, um, you know, thank y'all for tuning in. If anybody, you know, has any information or any clarity, uh, once again, you can call me at 919-587-7782. Uh, Richard Taylor, if anybody, you know, once again wants to um, cooperate or just, you know, share some light on the situation, you know, in any kind of manner, you know what I'm saying, and, and maybe... Maybe can help, you know, shed some light on the truth. You know, feel free to call 919 Peace and blessings.